Welcome back to Steve's Garage. In this channel, we like to build and fix things, specifically dirt bikes, dune buggies, and then we also have this great inflatable boat. And in this video, we'll be covering the best cheap inflatable boat options under a thousand dollars. Now, this won't be including the motor, but we'll be including some notes for you to consider as you make that decision. <laughs> So let's jump right into it here. So the first boat is the one that I personally own. This is gonna be your Briss 14.1 foot inflatable kayak. Uh, they call it a cub boat for short. This one has an air floor. Um, like I mentioned, this is the one I owned and I'm on season number three of this and I've had no major complaints. It's using the higher density PVC. Uh, so that 0.9 millimeter PVC that you'll also see on the Saturn inflatable boats. Uh, the Saturn inflatable boats seem to be a little bit more money, about $100 more uh, for that same length. But in terms of like the differences, I haven't seen any. Uh, I've seen them in person and they look pretty much the same. I know they're made from the same density of PVC pipe. So in terms of durability, unless there's a big difference in how the seams are welded together, uh, these are going to be exactly the same. So. I would personally recommend the Briss as you get to save a little bit more money. And one quick note just before we move down the list is if you're going to be going out in some rougher water, let's say if you're going to be in the bay or if you're on a lake that picks up some chop, you're definitely going to want to be on either like the Briss or Saturn option. Some of the other options down this list, I would feel a little bit unsafe on if we were going to handle some chop. But in my experience, handling the chop and the Briss has been no problem up to two or three feet never even been concerned about it. So if you're thinking about safety, I would definitely go with some of these more expensive options. Next up is the Camping Survivals. They have both a seven and a half foot variant and then a 10 foot, 10 foot variant. Uh, and these are right around 400 bucks. So they're a lot cheaper than the Briss or the Saturns. And you might be thinking to yourself, hey, it's a little bit shorter, uh, but I can save myself a few hundred bucks in the process. Now, taking a look at the listing, uh, I was not able to find a consistent brand website, which is something I don't like. I like to see that, you know, Saturn and Briss also maintain their own personal websites besides also selling it on, you know, third party websites. But the people who are selling them on those third party websites, let's say Walmart, Amazon, uh, they're being sold by Briss, by the actual manufacturer. When you look at this camping survivals, who's selling it on Walmart and other third party sites. It's just a bunch of various sellers. So that brings up concerns for customer support. Um, really the fact that they don't have their own website or they're not like a true brand, let's say. Um, looking at it, it is made out of the thicker material. They're claiming that it's made out of the 0.9 mil uh, PVC, the same as the Briss and the Saturns. So one of the biggest concerns I'm seeing here is this boat does not have a whole ID number, so you are unable to register it. So uh, pretty much everywhere in the United States, you need to register with the DMV uh, if you want to go out on your lakes, if you want to go on the ocean, whatever. All right, so next up, we have the cheapest option. These are going to be your Intex models or it's going to be your Intex 5 Excursion or maybe the Intex 4 Mariner. Um, these are going to be your cheaper inflatable boats. So these are definitely under $400, sometimes even under $300, sometimes even close to $200. So we're talking significantly cheaper. One thing that's surprising is on these models, they're boasting that you could get five people on there. I'm not sure how you could get five people on there comfortably. Um, even on the pictures, they look pretty uh, jammed up there but they are boasting some pretty impressive weight capacity numbers. On the Intex 5, they're boasting 1,300 pounds, which I'm not sure how they're doing it. Um, but then also on the Intex Mariner 4, I saw a weight capacity of 1,100 pounds. So you can get that many pe people out there based on the weight capacity, but space-wise, not sure if you wanna do that. Um, additionally on these, you could get a three horsepower engine on there. So they come with an engine motor mount and it could support up to 30 pounds. So it's that's pretty much what's limiting how much horsepower you could put on there is that weight. Um, these have a thinner uh, material. So these are gonna be made with 0.65 uh, millimeter thick PVC instead of that 0.9 that we've been seeing on a lot of these other variants. So this option has thinner material. It's a cheaper option. You can't get as much uh, of an engine on there as you would on some of the other options, but 
you could ultimately get on the water all said and done probably with the motor as well for about five hundred dollars which you can't hate on that but with this option uh, the big thing I'd be concerned about is taking on any significant chop. I wouldn't really want to bay test it too hard or put it into a choppy lake. If this was in a pond, I'd be definitely totally game for that. It would definitely be a killer in the pond um, and on a calm lake. But um, against any chop, I'm starting to lose confidence and I definitely want to be on the more expensive option. So if you guys found this video helpful, uh, make sure to leave a like if you guys have any questions on different inflatable boat options uh, I've gone through this purchasing decision before so I've kind of weighed the pros and cons of different variants Should I spend more should I spend less? Um, so drop your questions in the comments below and I will see you guys next time